Johnson. At 1.33, for the Maroons of the University of Chicago, it's Frankie Acosta for Elmer's College, Dalton Fuller. At 1.41, for Chicago, Jacob Smith. And for Elmer's, Jake Denhoff. Resting at 149 for the Maroons, Joseph Rudiger. And for the Blue Jays, Ryan Early. Coming out at 157, it's Devon Range for the Maroons and Mike Great Price for Elmer's. Resting at 165 for the University of Chicago, James Layton. And at 165 for the Blue Jays, Yusef Agu. At 174, for the University of Chicago, Joshua Lowy. And for Elmer's, Danny Balderas. At 184, for the Maroons, it's Sam Panisi. And for the Blue Jays, Joe Rao. For the University of Chicago, at 197, please welcome Mario Palmasano. His opponent, Danny Vargas. And that heavyweight, ladies and gentlemen, for the Maroons, Jeff Tybersky, for the Blue Jays, Brian Brooks. Head coach of the Maroons is Leo Coker in his 34th year. Leading the Maroons, he's assisted tonight by Ben Adams and Joe Bochensky. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to R.A. Fag and Hall. Glad you could join us tonight on BlueJaneTV.com. Elmer's College Wrestling is once on store for you tonight. Uh, part two of a doubleheader on BlueJTV.com. We opened with men's basketball this afternoon. Now the Elmer's Blue Jay Wrestling team plays host to the University of Chicago Maroons in a non-conference duel. Elmer's ranked 12th in the nation starting... Tonight's duel with a 3-0 record, Chicago 3-1. We are set at 125. Mark Johnson for the Blue Jays. Elmhurst in the Navy Blue Singlets. University of Chicago, it's Willie Long on the mat for the Maroons. Johnson 3-0, just a sophomore for the Blue Jays in his first season as a transfer. Long a freshman for the Maroons entering tonight's duel 1-3. Johnson, Johnson, a sophomore from Joliet. Off the mat, and they'll do it again. Johnson pushing at the head slightly of Long. Two wrestlers locked up dead center of the mat right now. Johnson trying to crank on an arm, steps around behind Long, and he's got the two points for a takedown. Mark Johnson very quick with that takedown, just overpowering Long a little bit, getting behind him, pushing him to the mat, and getting the takedown. The individual scores will be on the bottom part of the scoreboards, the team score at the top. Johnson still locked around the waist, Long trying to get to the edge of the mat and escape, but no luck. Johnson still in control, starts on top. 15 seconds of riding time right now for the Elmhurst sophomore. Johnson, letting that riding time build up over 25 seconds now. Still dead center of the mat. Long trying to get up to a base here for the Maroons, trying to get free as Johnson's ride time clock up now over 40 seconds. Up to his knees now is Willie Long. Johnson still wrapped completely around the waist of the Maroons wrestler. Now working on that shoulder as well, trying to pull down the arm, possibly to get a cradle. One minute left on the clock in the opening period, and Mark Johnson's ride time clock over a minute now, so that will come into play here. Riding time, having a time 
in control time over a minute. You get that extra bonus point. Johnson's ride time clock up at 123 now and counting. We're down to 40 seconds left in this first map. Johnson working on the arms, trying to spin Wong over. Wong doing a nice job defensively to fight that off, but unable to get to his feet as Mark Johnson's been in control since that original takedown. Wong now to his feet. Can he get the escape before the end of the period? Johnson spins him back to the mat with eight seconds to go. Wong still trying to get to his feet, but not going to be able to get that point. Mark Johnson, after the first period, leads 2 to nothing, and he's got a 2.05 possession time or riding time. Wrestlers will start it from the neutral spot in period number two. Two wrestlers come towards the edge of the mat. 20 seconds off the clock here in the opening, or excuse me, in the second period, rather. Johnson backing up along the aggressor right now. Pushing down on the head of Mark Johnson. Johnson sprawls out a little defense. Off the mat again. They'll come back to the middle. Ryan McKeel on referee tonight. Down to a minute as they'll come back towards the middle and restart with the clock still moving. Still a 2 nothing lead for Mark Johnson. Plus he's got the riding time in his favor. Two minute advantage. Johnson hooked in on the arm again of Long. Thirty seconds to go. Johnson tries to spin free behind and get a hold of the leg. He's got the leg. Long is partially off the mat, but the referee is going to let him continue right on the edge. As Johnson trying to pull him in, and now Sale may call. 18 seconds, they'll come back to the center and start it over again. Willie Long had one foot completely on the hardwood, but the referee allowed it to continue. 15 seconds, all that remains. Long shooting in. Johnson just blocks it. Now Johnson going for a leg. And Long sprawls out, and that will probably do it here for the second period. Second period comes to a close. Still in the opening match, 125 pounds. Mark Johnson for Elmhurst, the leader at two to nothing right now. Johnson elects to start in the down position here in the third and final period. Still in control on top. Johnson trying to get to a base up to his knees now. Trying to get his feet underneath him. Now Long trying to roll Johnson over. And Johnson will go flat back to the mat. Stomach flat on the mat right now. And a warning for stalling on Johnson. Johnson trying to crawl his way towards the edge, still trying to get to his feet long. Still in control, wrapped around the waist of the Elmhurst wrestler. 
Johnson spins free, kicks over the top. Did he get the full reversal? There it is. Two points for Mark Johnson. Riding time clock's going the wrong way. Now they've got it going right away on the scoreboard here. So four to nothing now in favor of Johnson. 30 seconds. Down to 20 seconds to go here in this opening match of the duel between the Blue Jays and the Maroons. Mark Johnson from Elmhurst leading at 4 0 with the riding time advantage of over a minute. Johnson pushing down on the head of Long, trying to roll his shoulders towards the mat. Down to three seconds to go, and that's how this one's going to come to a close. Mark Johnson, your winner, 5 to nothing the score after the riding time factoring in. So on to the next match at 133 pounds. Dalton Bullard for Elmhurst to Frankie Acosta for the University of Chicago. Acosta Jr. One and three record. Bullard a junior as well. Six and three record for Elmhurst. Bullard trying to pull in on the arm of Acosta. Acosta with a tie towards the center of the mat. Two wrestlers shake each other loose. 45 seconds off the clock here in this opening period. Bullard pushes down and now he's got Looks and trying to get himself in position for the takedown, and there it is as he pulls him back in the rest of the way and pulling him back towards the center of the mat. Keeping him in the circle right now is Dalton Bullard. Bullard with a one arm of Acosta pinned behind his back. Acosta trying to get to his feet, gain that escape point. And Bullard trying to spin Acosta to his shoulders. But Acosta flips back over. Still and it's and we're going to call an illegal hold here instead. And now Steve Marinetti walks towards the scores table. He wants a, a, a clarification on this. Looks like they gave, awarded the point to Acosta for an illegal hold by Dalton Bullard. Steve Marinetti, not a happy person right now down on the edge of the mat as he's getting an explanation from referee Ryan McKeel. Two to one now. So it's two to one now in favor of Bullard after the illegal hold point. Bullard quickly pulls the arm in. Dead center of the mat trying to spin Acosta again. Straddling the back of um, Acosta is Dalton Bullard. Now wrapped completely around the back of the Maroons grappler, trying to get him to his back to earn some near fall points. Now just got that arm trying to just power him over. And there it is. Count being applied here by the official. Almost got the shoulders flat. Bullard in position. Already got three for the near fall. Almost got it locked in here with 20 seconds and counting. 
Just can't quite put that right shoulder flat to the mat yet. And there it is. 2.52, the time of the fall for Dalton Bullard. Gives Elmhurst a nine to nothing lead now in this duel. And on to 141 pounds. For the Blue Jays, Jake Denoff on the mat at 141, a senior with a four and two record. For Chicago, Jacob Smith, a sophomore with a one and three record and Denoff quickly the aggressor for the Blue Jays. Arms locked completely around that left leg, pulling in Smith. And there is the takedown for Denoff as he gets him to the mat, still cranking around on that left leg. And now locked in on the waist completely. Spinning Smith back to the mat. As Smith had gotten to his feet. But they're off, and they'll come back to the middle. Denoff. Still working on the leg, and now he gets him right to the, sh to the mat. Got the shoulders down for just a split second, but Smith able to roll back over. Denoff had an opportunity to potentially put that one away early. Nice job by Smith to counter his way out of it. Clock rolling under two minutes to go in this opening period. It's 2-0 in favor of Jake Denoff and Elmhurst. Blue Jays leading the Maroons 9-0 in the duel. Back to his feet is Smith, and now he kicks loose for the escape. Minute and a half to go in the opening period as Denoff steps around behind again. If he can get him down, he'll have the other takedown, and there it is again. Two points for a takedown. Denoff up now four to one, and riding time now a factor over a minute and counting for the Elmhurst senior. Denoff kind of let Smith get to sitting position, then quickly yanked him back to the mat. Around the collarbone and the leg here on Smith. As Smith will sprawl out on his stomach again on the mat with 50 seconds to go in this opening period. Down to 30 seconds to go as Denoff still working on that left arm trying to Roll Smith over and generate some near fall points. Smith to his feet, but Denoff lifts him off the mat and powers him right back to the mat. Five seconds to go in the opening period, and this one will come to a close here with Jake Denoff of Elmhurst leading four to one. Smith will start down in the second period. Denoff still in control. Built up a two and a half minute riding time advantage now. Denoff, a former CCIW champion at 133 pounds. Denoff still trying to spin Smith over. Smith doing a nice job defensively. Denoff now pulling down on that left arm, left wrist of Smith. 
Smith back to his knees trying to get to his feet. Denoff will spin him around and back to the center of the mat they go. Smith working towards the edge of the mat this time as Denoff has been in control since the start of the second period. Started on top in period two and Denoff lifts him off the mat again and slams him to the mat. 30 seconds remain. Denoff now working on the legs of Smith, trying to spin him that way instead, down to five seconds to go. Uh, as period two in the books now. Elmhurst Jake Denoff in control of this one, leads four to one and has 4.23 of riding time built up. Denoff will start down to start period three. Quickly to his feet. Spins free, and he's got an escape point. Now five to one. Denoff shooting in, trying to grab hold of the right leg of Smith. And he can see if he can circle around behind for the takedown. Smith trying to fight it off, hand right around the waist of Denoff, and a stalemate. Come back to the middle, neutral position start with one and a half to go in the match. Denoff quickly back in on the leg again of Smith. Smith sprawling out, trying to play some defense here with 115. And Denoff able to step around and get the two points for the takedown. And now he'll let Smith to his feet. Trying to gain some extra points here with a major victory perhaps, up seven to two with another point for the riding time. One minute. So reality, it's a six point lead. Another takedown for Denoff would give him the eight points needed for a major. Denoff spins in behind, gets a hold of the right leg and now has that other takedown. Nine to two lead for Jake Denoff with riding time in his favor, four and a half minutes and going up as the clock rolls down to just 36 seconds. 30 seconds. Down to 10 seconds to go here. As Denoff trying to roll Smith over to his shoulders. Can he get one last turn before the end of the match? No, that's how this one will come to a close. A 10-2 major decision when you factor in the riding time for the Blue Jays. Makes the score 13 to nothing now in favor of Elmhurst in the dual meet. Denoff moves to 5-2 and two on the season. Up next is 149 pounders Ryan Early for Elmhurst, a junior with a six and three record. For the Maroons, Joseph Rudiger, a junior out of Minooka High School with a three and two record. Excuse me, a five and two record on the season. Early, a CCIW champion last year for Elmhurst. Early, shooting in quickly, trying to get hold of the leg. Rudiger does a nice job to fight him off. They're off the mat. They'll come back to the middle. Towards the edge of the mat, they circle. Now it's Rudiger getting a hold of Early's leg early quickly. Kinks loose of the grass, though. Early pushing down, trying to step around, but they'll off, they're off the mat. They'll come back to the middle and start again.
two grapplers tie each other up towards the edge of the mat. Rudiger in looking for the leg of Early. Early right at the edge and whistle and they'll call this one off the mat and come back to the middle. Early trying to spin his way in around for the tank down and a nice job of defense by Rudiger. Still nothing in this match. 120 and counting on the clock. And a stalemate. We'll start one more time. Early shooting in, gets a hold of the leg, spins. Rudiger to the mat and gets the two points for the takedown. Early. Trying to roll Rudiger over and get those shoulders to the mat. Rudiger up to his feet and gets the escape point. Make it two to one. 20 seconds of ride time advantage for Early. Early gets a hold of the leg with 25 seconds to go. Can he get behind? There it is. Another takedown for Ryan Early. Four to one advantage with 17 seconds left on the clock. Early pulling him back towards the center as a right on the edge of the circle. Pull them in and he'll ride out the rest of this clock here. That'll do it for the first period. 41 seconds of ride time and a four to one cushion for Elmhurst. Blue Jays lead the duel 13 nothing after the four point major win by Jake Denoff. Early starts down into open period two and he quickly gets an escape and it's a five to one lead now for Ryan Early. Early in on the leg again of Rudiger. If he can push him down, he'll have the takedown again, and there it is. Seven to one now in favor of Ryan Early and the Blue Jays. Down to a minute five to go. Ryan early in control here for Elmhurst. Rudiger to his feet momentarily. Early has him back down on all fours. Early. Still hanging on with that ride time advantage building up to over a minute and a half now. Down to 30 seconds to go in period number two. Ryan early in control, seven to one for the Blue Jays. And off the mat, they'll move back to the middle and start over. Caution for a quick start. 13.9 seconds left on the clock. Rudiger trying to get a point here before the end of the period. Early holding on, wrapped around the waist. Down to three seconds to go. Early still with the control of those legs. That's how period two comes to a close. 
Ryan Early and Elmers lead 7-1. to one. Plus, he's got 2 minutes and 14 seconds of riding time. Rudiger starts on the bottom to his feet, and now he's free. Make it 7-2. to two. And a shoelace come undone. Stop the match momentarily. Seven to two the score. Early shooting in, looking for the left leg. Nice job of defense by Rudiger. Tried to counter it, and Early was there to block off the attempt. Early in on the leg, gets him down for the takedown, trying to now spin him over. Has the leg, but can't get the upper half of the body rolled over right now, trying for the cradle, and now spinning him back toward, uh, toward the shoulders, towards the mat, right on the edge of the circle. And they'll come back to the middle. 102, all that's left on the clock. It's 9 to 2 in favor of Ryan Early. Right now, it would be a major decision with the riding time. <laughs> Early's going to let Rudiger to his feet, push him loose for an escape. 9-3 to three now in favor of Ryan Early. And he's in on the leg one more time. Early wrapped around the right leg of Rudiger. Rudiger trying to counter it. And there is two points for Ryan Early. 30 seconds, all that's left. Early will let him to his feet again and look for another takedown. Be 11 to 4, it is. Still a major decision right now for the Blue Jays with the riding time. Early's got that right leg one more time. Can he get one last takedown before the horn? Down to two seconds, and that's how this one will come to a close. 12 to 4. That's a major decision. Give Elmhurst four more points. Makes it 17 to nothing in favor of the Blue Jays. On to 157 pounds. For the Blue Jays, Mike Grice, a junior with a five and three record. Devin Range, a freshman for the Maroons in Chicago, out of Cleveland, Ohio, with a two and two record. Range pushing down on the head of Grice, trying to spin his way in behind. Range now working on the leg as well. He's got a hold of the right leg of Grice. Grice spinning towards the edge of the mat. He's completely off the mat. And they will come back to the middle and start again. Grice found himself in a bad spot. Nice job of playing defense by the Elmhurst wrestler. Grice shooting in, looking for the right leg of Range. Range sprawls out, plays a little defense. And now Range trying to counter. Potentially dangerous hold call. They'll break and come back neutral and start again. 
135 left on the clock as it ticks away in this opening period. Two wrestlers tie up dead center. Greisel pushes way free and try again. Greisel pulling in on the left arm of range. Two minutes gone in the books in the opening period. Still scoreless. Grice shooting in. Range will push him away. Now Grice pushes range free. Forty seconds left in the opening period. Range extends the arm for the leg. Grice fights it off. And Grice will push Range away, and they'll make their way back to the middle one more time. Range puts Grice on his back with a quick takedown, and now some near fall points accumulating as well. Grice in trouble here before the horn. Two points for the takedown, three points for the near fall, and it's five to nothing as Grice got caught just at the end of that opening period. Range elects to go neutral. Writing time clock shows no seconds. It should have been probably about five seconds would be my guess after that end of the first period. It's five to nothing in favor. And they're going to call over Ryan McKeel here. They're going to try and figure out what it should be with the riding time here, I think, is they're going to try to get that clock set. Seven seconds is what they award. And the riding time clock is now continuing to go up, though, so they never stopped it off that. It's still nothing loose there. Well, now they've got it right. Seven seconds of riding time advantage for range. He's got the 5 nothing lead. They're a minute in to the second period. Rice pulling on the arm. Look for the leg for a moment. Range to his knee momentarily. I'll back up. Down to 30 seconds to go in the second period. Rice shooting in on the leg. Range fights it off, though, as the two remain tied up in the middle of the middle of the mat. Mike Grice and Devin Range of Chicago off the mat again. 10.4 seconds left in the second period. Grice tries to dive in, down to three seconds. Range will fight it off, and he will carry a five-point lead into the third period.
Range starts down in period three. Grice is going to have to try and get some near fall points here. Range to his feet momentarily. Now pulled back to all fours and now right back to his feet. Range trying to break the hold of Grice and spin free for the escape. Give him the one point for the escape. Make it six to nothing in favor of range. Devin Range, the freshman leading Mike Grice. 109 left in the match. Grice finds himself down six. Fifty seconds left on the clock. Grice still trying to get his first points. Looking for a tank down, and Range doing a nice job right at the edge of the mat. They're off. They'll come back to the middle and start again. Forty seconds. Bryce has to be the aggressor here, down by six points. Range pushes him off. Range shoots in. Grice sprawls out back to his feet. Look for a quick takedown. Grice trying to spin his way around. But they're out just before Grice can get position. 6.5 seconds left. And that's how this one will come to a close. Final score, six to nothing in favor of Devin Range, makes it 17 to three in the duel. So up to 165 pounds, Yusuf Al Ghul for Elmhurst, a junior with a seven and three mark, James Layton a junior for the Maroons. He's got a 9-1 record on the season, the best record of any Chicago wrestler participating in the duel tonight. Towards the edge of the mat they go. 45 seconds into this match. Al Ghul pushing down on the head of Leighton. Al Ghul's got a hold of the leg if he can pull it in. They're right on the edge of the mat. And Al Ghul's got him hooked with around the waist. Leighton trying to spread himself wide and force that one break the hole. Then he does. At the edge of the mat, they'll come back to the middle. Nice job of sprawling out by Leighton to fight off the takedown of Yusuf El Ghul. Halfway through the opening period. Leighton cranking down on the head of Al Ghul. Al Ghul gets free. Two wrestlers tie up again towards the middle. 105 left in the opening period. Leighton shooting in on the leg of Al Ghul. Al Ghul 
fights it off. Back to a tie up towards the middle. Al Ghul just almost had that leg of Leighton, but Leighton just able to get loose just at the last second and step around it. As Al Ghul couldn't quite close up the arms around the leg in time. A nice move by Al Ghul, but a quick reflex by Leighton. Down to 10 seconds in period number one. First period goes in the books. No score. Choice deferred. Now goal, goal will start down in period number two. Up, 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 up. No way. No way. On, now goal to his feet. Trying to get free. Leighton trying to pick him up and put him back on the mat. Al Ghul quickly still maintaining his balance, still on his feet. And Al Ghul fights his way free for an escape. Only 19 seconds of riding time for Leighton. Al Ghul, the first wrestler to score a point, up one to nothing. Range, or excuse me, uh, Leighton shooting in on the leg of Al Ghul. Al Ghul trying to fight it off. And Al Ghul trying to circle his way free. Now Al Ghul trying to spin free and does. Nice defensive move by Yusuf Al Ghul as Leighton had a hold of the leg. Down to 35 seconds. Al Ghul looking for the shot and the left leg. Leighton sprawls out, fights it off. Two wrestlers will break and now tie up again in the middle. Leighton in on the leg. Can he get the takedown? Yes, he does. Just before the open at the end of the second period. Al Ghul trying to get to his feet. And Leighton will just power him down and hold him down for the two to one lead after two periods. 31 seconds of riding time in favor of Leighton. Leighton starts at the bottom. Al Ghul staying in control, taking that riding time clock down. But Leighton back to his feet and free for an escape. Leads it three to one now. Al Ghul trails by two points. Blue Jays in control of the duel right now, 17 to three. Just past the halfway, this is the sixth out of 10 matches. Al Ghul in behind with the leg. Can he finish the takedown and get the two points? Leighton wraps around the waist, trying to fight it free. Al Ghul in position. Can he get the two points? There it is. Yusuf Al Ghul has tied the match at three. One minute. Tied at three with under a minute to go. And Al Ghul's going to let Leighton go, gives him the escape point. Confident he can get another takedown with less than a minute to go. Al Ghul shooting in, and they're off the edge of the mat. They'll come back to the middle. Al Ghul electing to give 
Kick Leighton now, gave him up the escape point. It's four to three. Riding time will not be a factor in this match. 36 seconds left. Down to 30 seconds, tied up again, dead center. 20 seconds, Al Ghul looking for a shot. Leighton loses his footing, sprawls out on the map, but quickly back to his feet. Down to 15 seconds. Al Ghul shooting in, trying to get a hold of the leg. Leighton's going to sprawl out, though. And now a stalemate called with 3.8 seconds left. Al Ghul shooting in, Leighton playing defense though, and he will come out of here with a 4-3 victory. James Leighton the winner at 165 pounds. On to 174 pounds, Danny Balderas for the Blue Jays. 7-1 record, ranked number four in the nation at 174. Joshua Lowy. A sophomore for Chicago, a four and three record. Balderas, a sophomore for the Blue Jays as well. Balderas quickly in behind. He's gotten the two points. Is the two points for Danny Balderas right off the bat, and Balderas is going to elect for the neutral start. They'll give up the point. Balderas in on the feet, and he's got another takedown. Balderas up four to one. Let's see if Balderas is going to let him go again. Now they've got the riding time straightened out. Four to one. Let's see if Balderas will cover this time. Danny Balderas trying to spin Lowy. Onto his back and get those shoulders to the mat. Strong hold on Lowy. Balderas trying to power him down. Lowy. Lowy just fighting it off right now for the Maroons. And Lowy to his feet and an escape. Lowy shooting in on the leg, defended by Balderas. Balderas with 53 seconds of riding time. He leads it 4 to 2. Balderas pulling on the arm. He's got the legs and another takedown. Six to two in favor of Balderas. Riding time now factoring in over a minute. 45 seconds left to go in period number one. They'll start back in the center. Six to two. In favor of Balderas. Balderas covers. Trying to power Lowey to the mat. Down to under 30 seconds to go. Yeah. 
Balderas cranking on the shoulders. Lowy to his feet, and Balderas will let him go and give up the point. Six to three with eight seconds to go. Balderas trying to get one last takedown before the end of the period. And he is not going to get it. Six to three is how it stands after one period in favor of Danny Balderas. Valderis starts on top in control on period number two. And an escape point again for Lowy. Six to four, the score in favor of Balderas. He does have a 153 advantage of riding time. Balderas. In tight, trying to snap down on Lowy. They come back towards the middle. 1.15 left on the clock in period two. Ball there is working on the arms, trying to just power Lowy down to the mat. Both wrestlers have a hold of a leg. And a stalemate called. And a caution warning. Balderas trying to pull the leg down, and he slams him to the mat, but they're just off the mat. No takedown. Right on the edge. Balderas trying to pull in the left leg of Lowy. Under six seconds. <laughs> so on to the third period. Balderas will start down this time for the Blue Jays. There's the whistle, and he's quickly to his feet. See if he can break the hold, and he does. Right off the bat. Balderas and Lowey right at the edge of the mat. It's seven to four now. There was a little issue with the score. Where they do have the correct score up there. It's seven to four in the duel or in this match, and there's two points for Balderas right on the edge. Nine to four now in favor of Elmhurst. Lowy trying to get to his feet. A whistle, and we'll come back in the middle and start again. Down to a minute to go. Up nine to four is Danny Ball, Darius and Elmers. We're at 174 pounds. Three matches to go after this. 
Ball Darris will let him go. And turned his back was Lowy, a mistake you cannot make. Turned his back to Ball Darris. He gets the takedown. He might let him go again, try to get another one. Should be 11 to 5. That's what the score is. Now Chicago coach Leo Coker going over. Have a word with the official. Elects to give up the point. It's 11 6 now in favor of Balderas. He elects the neutral start. It's new in NCAA this year. You can give up the neutral start and give up the point without having to cover someone. Down to 8 seconds to go. And there's two points for Balderas, 13 to 6. He'll get the major decision with the riding time. A 14 to 6 major victory for Danny Balderas. Makes it 21 to 6 in favor of the Blue Jays in the duel. And on to 184 pounds. For the Blue Jays, Joe Rao, a junior, 8 0 record, returning All American, ranked number three. Sam Panisi, a sophomore with a three and four mark for the Maroons. Rao was the seventh place finisher at the NCAA championship last, last year. And Panisi gets a hold of Rao's leg. Torquing backwards, Rao trying to spin his way. Backwards, and now a stalemate call. They'll start over again in the middle. And Rao in from behind, and he's got the takedown two points. And a potentially dangerous hold called on Rao, so they'll come back. Rao working on the waist, got wrapped around the waist, and he's got the right arm pinned to the back. Trying to spin Panisi. Panisi in trouble right now as Rao going to work. Count being applied for some near fall points. Rao just can't quite get that other shoulder down. He's in position here for the victory. Does he have him? There it is. 123 left on the clock. Makes it a pin in 137 for Joe Rao. Two matches left, Danny Vargas and Mario Palmasano, the 197 pounders. Vargas for Elmhurst, a sophomore, five and three record. Palmasano, a freshman with a four and three mark for the Maroons. Vargas pushing on Palmasano towards the edge of the mat. Vargas with that right shoulder wrapped up. And they're on a warning for stalling on Palmasano. They'll come back to the middle and start again. Palmasano's got the leg of Vargas trying to pull it in and get the two points. Vargas hopping on one leg. Palmasano still with the leg, and now he, Vargas able to break the hold. No points.
Vargas and Paul Masano. Tied up right towards the edge of the mat. They're off and they'll come back to the middle now. 124 left on the clock in period number one. Then all Elmers, 27 to 6. They've effectively won the duel. Chicago cannot win it. Paul Masano pushing in. Spinning around on Vargas, and Vargas gets Paul Masano flat to the mat. In trouble. He's got the takedown, near fall points in the takedown. Can he finish him off and get the pin here? Does he have the shoulders flat? The referee in the right position as Vargas just trying to power him down. And there it is. Two minutes and 16 seconds, the official time of the pin for Danny Vargas. Makes it 33 to six in favor of the Blue Jays in our last match of the day. Brian Brooks for Elmers and Jeff Tyberski. And Brooks quickly has Tyberski on his back with a takedown. Brooks a senior, six and two record. Tyberski a sophomore, two and four. Brooks trying to spin over, and he's got Tyberski in trouble. And there's a shoulder slant, and he gets the pin. 23 seconds, all that Brian Brooks needed. And that will do it for the duel as Elmhurst wins it by a final score of 39-6. to The last three matches all end in pin. Brooks just overpowering Tyberski right at the very end to get the final, uh, the fall for the Blue Jays. So that will do it here tonight. The final once again, 39-6 to six in favor of the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays win eight of the ten matches. Four of those by pinfalls. Dalton Bullard at 133. Joe Rao at 184. Danny Vargas at 197. And Brian Brooks at 285. Your winners by fall tonight, along with Mark Johnson, Jake Denoff, Ryan Early, and Danny Balteris, also adding victories for the Blue Jays. So that'll do it for our doubleheader today. Thank you for watching on BlueJayTV.com. For Glenn Liljeberg and Phil, our cameraman, this is Kevin Jude saying so long. Thanks for joining us tonight. Make sure you check out BlueJayTV.com for all of your latest uh, schedule, upcoming schedules of all the latest contests that will be had your way this winter, men's and women's basketball and wrestling still to come. Plenty of action this winter here on BlueJayTV. Thanks again for watching.